global influence of the U.S. in these key industries. We must confront these challenges by promoting American innovation and entrepreneurship. Our bill to reauthorize NTIA will help us beat China by providing NTIA the tools needed to use resources like Spectrum more efficiently, streamline regulations, and advance connectivity across the United States. This will enhance internet and public safety services across the country and create more economic opportunities for millions of Americans. The bill promotes broadband deployment by strengthening agency coordination and secures our networks from foreign threats. We also have several solutions before us that will ensure Americans continue to have the ability to choose the vehicles and the fuels that best serve their needs. This is a critical moment in history. We, we must be honest with the American people about how forcing them to switch to electric vehicles plays right into China's scheme to control our automotive future. China already controls access to critical minerals necessary for EVs. It controls 76% of global battery cell production capacity for EVs, around 75% of all lithium ion batteries, and the majority of processing and refining capacity for over half of the world's lithium, cobalt, and graphite. And last quarter, it became the largest exporter of new motor vehicles in the world surpassing Japan. Instead of forcing Americans to switch to EVs, let's get back to the true goals, which are reducing carbon emissions, improving fuel efficiency, and preserving Americans' access to affordable uh, transportation choices. The legislative solutions today will ensure that we don't hand our automotive or communications future to the Chinese Communist Party. America, not China, must lead the way in cutting edge technologies. We need to stay focused on securing America's leadership in these sectors through innovation, entrepreneurship, and promoting a free competitive market to lower costs for people. That's how we've led for decades, and that's how we win the future. I now recognize the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Pallone, for five minutes for an opening statement. Thank you, Madam Chair.